give very good morning to my dear students very less participants are there today in the class please tell your friends to attend the classes regularly so we will, we have discussed lti system lsi systems in that i have told you that this is very important topic to find magnitude and phase of lti system this i think you have written in your copy in transform domain this is the magnitude and this is the phase angle phi of omega now one more important factor c the function h of e j omega the whole square is written by h of e j omega h conjugate e to the power j omega e to the power j omega is equal to z so we have replaced this by z so final transform equation is h of z into h of z plus when z is equal to e to the power j omega clear here the function h of z inverse has zeros and poles that are the reciprocal of the zeros and poles of h of z is it clear h of z and h of z inverse according to correlation property for the z transform the function h of z into h of z inverse is a z transform of the auto correlation of the unit sample response correlation means ki how much the two signals are correlated to each other their properties their phase their magnitude how much both the signals are correlated to each other so that is a very important property of z transform auto correlation then it follows from the winner kinch theorem that h of z square is a fourier transform of auto correlation sequence h of n h of z square is a fourier transform of the auto correlation sequence of h of n which is the equation time delay of a filter is a measure of the average delay of the filter as a function of frequency it is defined as a negative first derivative of the filter's phase response if the frequency response of filter is h to the power g omega then the group delay is given by see in numerical equations they can ask you first to find the inverse response of lsi system and then to find the group delay so how we will find the group delay to find the group delay you have to first find the phase angle how we will find the phase angle phase angle is this by simplifying h of z here you will get the phase angle which is equals to tan inverse h imaginary upon h real terms so first you will find out the phi of omega then you will take the derivative with respect to omega and minus of that will give you the phase angle time delay in this way you have to find the time delay of the function now one more important topic i want to discuss that is well that is a difference equation of lti systems difference equation and its relationship we have to study so i'm opening that presentation so here we will start this dsp z transform and its application for signal processing and here how z transforms and lti systems are related so see this is a system function of lti systems h of n is my system response whose transform is h of z x of n given to the system output will be y of n x of z in z domain the input is hello priyanka why you are late beta in the class from 10:30 we have started please be on time 
system functions of LTI system. X of Z, if I am having Z transform of the input signal, the system response H of Z will be multiplied by X of Z to get Y of Z. This is the equation in Z transform domain. You can see it. H of N is equal to H of N Z to the power minus N. This equation is of H of N. Next, H of N, we can find out H of Z, which is the transfer function and transfer function is the ratio of Y of Z upon X of Z. Clear? We all know this thing. So, as the LDI system can be characterized by the difference equation, we can write it as the equation is shown to you. Y of n is equals to summation a k x of n minus k. What is x? x is my all input term. Summation of all input terms. Clear? Minus summation of all output terms. Y of n minus k is my overall y of n. So this equation is known as Linear constant coefficient difference equation. In short, it is written as LCCDE. I will write it in the chat box. It is known as LCCDE equation. What is its full form? Linear constant coefficient difference equation. Because we are dealing with the digital domain, the equation is known as difference equation. When I am talking about time domain, when I am working on continuous domain, analog signals, I will name it as differential equation. Differential equation and here we will discuss difference equations only according to your syllabus. So, difference equation is given by this term. So, you have to remember this equation where the limit varies for input. Input will start from n is equal to 0 instant till capital N or till infinity you can say. But the output will start from the position 1. You can see in the equation k is equal to 1, 2 and you have to remember this. It is having a very good logic which we will discuss. The difference equation specifies actual operation that must be performed by the discrete time system on the input data in the time domain in order to generate the desired output. Y of n depends on x as well as on y. But what is the previous values of y? The previous values of y are the past values not the present and future values as i am finding the value of y of n and n is equal to 3 so y of 3 present value is y of 3 i am having the past values y of 0 y of 1 y of 2. it may require in feedback systems some values of output can be taken to generate the present output so those output values are my past output values. Y of 0, Y of 1 or Y of 2 can be used to find out Y of 3. Clear? So the difference equation specifies the actual operation that must be performed by the discrete time system on the input data in the time domain in order to generate the desired output. In Z domain, the equations are written as X of N minus K ka Z transform kya hoga? x of z into z to the power minus k. This one. Okay. And y of n minus k z domain y of z z to the power minus k. If the output of the system depends only on the present and past input samples. Getting what I am saying. If the output of the system that is this y of z. y of z only depends on the present 
present means if I'm finding the values of n is equal to 1 to here, it is depending on input n is equal to 1 and past input sample values that is n is equal to 0, minus 1, minus 2. But not on previous outputs that is bk is equal to 0. bk is a coefficient which is related with the output term. ak is a coefficient which is related with the input term. Is it clear? So what is my bk? bk and ak are the multiplier coefficients. Are the multiplier coefficients. But it is having specific name. bk is known as non-recursive multiplier coefficient. And AK, which is related with the input, is known as recursive multiplier coefficient, which is having a very good significance. Recursive and non recursive. Okay. And whenever we are saying that it does not depend on previous outputs, that means the values of y of 0, y of 1, if I am finding y of 2, that is, this coefficient is 0, that means this term is 0. Then such kind of LTN system is known as finite impulse response systems. That is FIR systems. Here, so FIR system depends on only recursive multiplier coefficients. Sorry, on non-recursive multiplier. Who is waiting? Kumal. Any more students joining? So, I will write in the chat box this coefficient names. Where A, K, K is in suffix, you all know, is known as non recursive multiplier coefficient. Non recursive. Multiplier coefficient. TK and BK. Is known as recursive multiplier coefficient. The coefficient. How you will remember the coefficient which is associated with the output y term with that means it is providing some feedback to the input side so that system coefficient is known as recursive and the coefficient which is related with input is known as is known as non-recursive multiplier coefficient is it clear to you who is waiting now? Okay. So clear this equation with Z transform finite impulse response FIR else it is known as infinite impulse response means that the present output of the system depends on present input, past input and past outputs also that that system is known as infinite impulse response IIR. It is having n number of properties there is basic difference between FIR and IIR systems which we will see. So this terms by the name of this terms you will come to do you can say that these are recursive and non-recursive systems also. Question can be asked what are the recursive and non-recursive systems? Then you can write LCCD equation, Z transform of that, VR systems. Then you can write, you can mention that this coefficients AK and BK, depending on this, the recursive and non recursive systems are classified. Okay? So there are many systems where output of system not only depends on present and past values of input, but also on already available past output values. Such systems requires memory. Why it requires memory? Because see this system, IIR, 
will require memory as it has to store the past values of output because it is required to calculate the next value of the output. Is it clear? Am I audible? Any doubt you want to ask? I will share this slide. This is a slide. So, IIR system requires memory. It is memory with memory system. Otherwise, it is FIR system. It is a memoryless system. So, again, recursive system and non-recursive system. I am repeating a system whose output y of n, whose output y of n. At a time n depends on any number of past outputs, any number of past outputs like past outputs like I will write some of the values of past output like I want to calculate y of n. So what past outputs I will be requiring here now? y of n minus 1, okay, y of n minus 2, y of n minus 20, any value I can require to calculate y of n. So that type of system is known as recursive system. Example of recursive system is cumulative average if I want to find average of 10 numbers, so what I will require, I will add first two numbers. I am adding 1 to 10. 1, 2, till 10. 10 numbers I am adding. Clear, I want average of all those numbers. And what I will require, I will require addition of first two numbers. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 is to be stored. Then to calculate next value of output, I will require the past value of output. That was 3. 3 will be added now to... 3 will be added now to the next number 4 to 3. So I will get 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. That value of output will be stored. Then 6 will be added with 4. So in this way I will get a recursive system. So example is my cumulative average and such type of systems are known as infinite impulse response system that is IIR system. Okay. Any doubt? Next. If y of n only depends on the present and past values of input, then such system is called non-recursive systems. So here what will happen? y of n only only depends on x of n, x of n minus 1, x of n minus 2, x of n minus capital N. This is the last one of capital N. See in some standard books, here, AK and BK coefficient can be changed. With input in some standard books, the coefficient mentioned is B. With output, the coefficient mentioned is A. And this is also changed. M is for input side and N is for output side. So don't get confused. We should remember. That's why I'm telling you again and again. With x, with input, the coefficient given it is a non-recursive. With output, the coefficient given is recursive. Clear? So whatever it is, if you have our concepts clear, we will always go in the right direction. So example of non-recursive system is FIR. Clear? Now, basic difference between recursive and non-recursive system. You know, one requires memory. IIR requires, uh, sorry, recursive system requires memory. Non-recursive system doesn't require memory. It has feedback. Non-recursive system doesn't have any feedback. It is open loop system. A recursive system is a closed loop system. Re recursive systems are known as IIR systems. Non-recursive NR systems are known as FIR. Is it clear? And for recursive system to compute output, when it is excited by an input signal applied at time n is equal to 0, we first need to compute all the previous values of output. Are you getting my point? If I am calculating for IIR systems, for recursive systems the output, then it first requires 
all the values of the previous outputs. Then only it can calculate the present value of output. So it will compute the outputs in sequence. It will compute the output in sequence. So output of recursive system should be computed in order. सबसे पहले ऐसा नहीं है कि मैं y of 10 find करूँगी, मैं y of 0 find करूँगी, then y of 1, then y of 2, then y of 3, till 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 y of n. But it will give you outputs in sequence. But for non-recursive system, the output can be computed in any order. If I want to find y uh, n is, uh, output at n is equal to 200, I can find out y 200. Then I can find out y 20 if I want to find the value of output n at n is equal to 20. So in random sequence, you can find out the outputs in in which system in please write down in the chat box. Random outputs can be found out in which kind of system? Students, I am waiting for the reply. It is non-recursive system. Very good. And non-recursive systems means In any order, that means FIR, yes. Okay, so any doubt, anything you want to ask? So moving ahead, LTI systems are characterized by LCCDE equation. We all know linear constant coefficient difference equation. From which we move ahead towards... FIR, IR systems. Now we can write the transfer function equation like this. H of Z equation we have written over here. We had Y of Z, X of Z. Now how to find H of Z? H of Z is a ratio of Y of Z and X of Z. So what I will do? I will collect all the terms of Y of Z equals to X of Z terms to here h of z. So h of z equation is equal to y of z upon x of z. Is it clear this equation? h of z. In many standard books, the upper coefficient is bk. So don't get confused. Okay. This coefficient is BK and this is A in many standard rules. You can write anything, but you have to define it. What is AK and what is BK? Clear? So H of Z is this equation. Now, if the output of the system depends only on the present and past input samples, but not on previous outputs, that is BK equals to zero, this coefficient. Then such system is known as final impulse FIR response. H of Z is equal to, see BK coefficients are 0 for your um, FIR systems. Clear? So what I will get? I will get 
एच ऑफ जेड इज इक्वल टू समेशन के इक्वल टू जीरो ए के जेडर माइनस के दैट मीन्स इन टोटली डिपेंड्स ऑन द वैल्यूज ऑफ इनपुट ओनली एक्स ऑफ एन माइनस के ए के जेड टू दर माइनस के इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट कॉजल स्टेबल सिस्टम एच ऑफ एन इज इक्वल टू जीरो फॉर एन लेस देन जीरो clear fr system is an all zero system and are always stable so this is the condition with fir system is it clear fir system is an all zero system because there is no numerator uh, denominator term so there is no pole in the system only zeros exist and are always stable is it audible students okay if bk coefficient is not equal to zeros the system is called iir system in finite impulse response system okay and it has poles that means it is a overall equation of like this एच ऑफ जेड इज इक्वल टू हाँ मैं बुला एच ऑफ जेड इज इक्वल टू समेशन न्यूमरेटर एज वेल एज डिनोमिनेटर न्यूमरेटर एज वेल एज डिनोमिनेटर सो आई कैन फाइंड आउट एच ऑफ एन एंड आई आई आर है फिल्टर हैज पोल एंड इट्स वैल्यू वेरीज फ्रॉम माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू इन्फिनिटी प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ एल टी आई सिस्टम यूजिंग द जेड ट्रांसफॉर्म so all the properties of z transform will be configured for lti systems causal system roc extends outward from the outermost pole wherever is the pole exist the roc extends outwards from the outermost pole this we have to remember because they can ask you to find out whether the system is causal stable and to plot the roc of lti system then you should remember this two condition Stable system H of Z is B I B O bounded input bounded output stability. R O C includes the unit circle. R O C includes the unit circle. This is my R O C, and it includes my unit circle. A stable system requires that its Fourier transform is uniformly convergent. Otherwise, we can't plot the region of convergence from Z transform. So a stable system requires its Fourier transform should be convergent. Z transform and frequency response estimation. So the frequency response of a system, as digital filter, can be readily obtained from its Z transform. I have told you these things earlier. Y of Z is equal to X Z into H of Z. If I am finding it in time domain y of n, then I will convolute the input with respect to impulse response of your system. Here I am talking about z transform of input. Then I will directly get y of z is equal to x of z into h of z. So x of z given as input h of z y of z the output, and where z is known as e to the power s t. What is S? We all know sigma plus j omega t. This is again just the revision of the things which we have studied earlier with respect to LTI system. As steady state, z is equal to e to the power j omega t. I will put z as e to the power j omega t in DTFT domain. This I will get mod of y is equal to a omega mod of x, and this is magnitude and this is phase. Frequency response estimation, phase delay, and group delay. I have discussed. their group delay phase delay is denoted by tau p and group delay is denoted by tau g to find this delay is what we require we require the phase of the system phase agar mujhe pata hai to i can find out phase delay and group delay clear inverse z transforms you all know this is the equation and this ppt i will share you for your long division method and partial fraction expansion if you require theek okay, hai here see this example 
now we will simplify numericals you can have your copy also because all the basics of lti systems are discussed now you all have to just simplify some numericals so take out your copy student because you won't get anything if you won't simplify so parallelly you start simplifying in your copy i will explain you everything in detail so are you ready so this is the first numerical where if y of n is given to you or this is a dsp system which is described by lccd equation given by this and you have to find its transfer function and impulse response always lccd equation will constitute of x of n and y of n minus 1 terms if by looking towards this equation what you can say it is a recursive or non recursive system yes you will please reply by looking towards this equation which is given to you in the question this is a recursive or non recursive students please reply waiting how how it is non recursive think about it we are having both the terms in the equation input as well as output so it is a non recursive system any more answers students it is a recursive system it is a recursive system how it is a recursive system please look towards the definition of fir and iir i'm going back again where we have seen the definition that if the output depends only on the present and past input samples input samples means only x of n then it is known as fir system fir systems are my non recursive systems fir systems are non recursive systems and recursive systems means where both the input and output terms exist in the y of n equation so here in y of n equation i am having both the terms x of n x of n minus 1 n minus 2 then y of n minus 1 and y of n minus 2 so is it a recursive or a non recursive system getting or not okay so i will simplify this equation to find out its transfer function so to find transfer function what i will do i am having n domain i will transfer this to z domain to so first step in your copy write down finding or taking the z transform of the given equation taking the transform of the given equation so how i will find the z transform it's very very simple for shifted signals y of z directly x of z i will use a pen 
x of n z transform is x of z x of n minus 1 z transform will be z inverse x of z clear for x of n minus 2 z transform will be z to the power minus 2 x of z for y of n minus 1 now the present output depends on all the present input and past input values okay with the past output values also the value of output at n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2 getting my point so it is a recursive system so again its z transform is this Z inverse y of z and z transform of y of n minus 2 is this. Is it clear anything you want to ask? Write down this equation in your copy. Are you writing it in your copy? Okay, so now I will collect all the terms of x and all the terms of y. Then I will write y h of z is equal to y of z upon x of z and get this term. You can check whether you are getting this or not. Okay, getting the same equation. So now what I am doing, I am converting these powers to positive powers. It is negative power converting into positive power. So I will get it is not necessary to convert this, but you can do it. So I will get h of z is this equation now I have to find the impulse response if transfer function is only asked this is my transfer function okay this equation is my transfer function if it is asked impulse response then I have to find the inverse z transform for that only we have converted this powers so h of n is equal to z inverse h of z h of z upon z this is a method to find out inverse z transform we will Factorize these terms of denominator z squared plus 0.1 z minus 0.2. So this is factored in 3 z, z and z. So how many factors are there? z is equal to minus 0.5 and z is equal to 0.4 and z is equal to 0. So three factors are there in the denominator. Now I will split this thing to find the z inverse z transform a by z. Three coefficients will be there a, b and c. a we will find out at minus 1. b we will find out as minus 1 by 3. c is 7 by 3. How we will find out this we have to do in our copy. To find a, b and c. To find a we will consider this equation. To find b we will consider this equation. To find c we will consider this equation. You can see it in any standard book. You will get how to find this inverse z transform of the equation. So I will get h of z is equal to this. Z upon z uh, minus a is given by a of a to the power n u of n. This is the inverse z transform. A to the power n ka z transform kya hota hai? Z upon z minus a or 1 upon 1 minus z a minus z inverse. Sorry, 1 upon 1 minus a z inverse is my z transform. So directly I am getting this equation in that form. So I can convert this equation in this and you can write the equation. So how I will get first equation will be 3a del n. Impulse response of z is del n. 
देन z प्लस पॉइंट फाइव का क्या होगा इनवर्स z ट्रांसफॉर्म z अपॉन z प्लस पॉइंट फाइव ए टू दार एन ए क्या है मेरा पॉइंट फाइव तो माइनस पॉइंट फाइव टू दार एन यू ऑफ एन जेड इज इक्वल टू माइनस पॉइंट फाइव ठीक है थर्ड टर्म थ्री इंटू सी सी की वैल्यू फाइंड करोगे जो सी की वैल्यू होगी यहां रखोगे देन जेड अपॉन जेड माइनस पॉइंट फोर तो यू गेट पॉइंट फोर एन यू विल गेट पॉइंट फोर एन क्लियर सो यू ऑफ एन So this is my impulse response. You can write it in your copy. I will wait for you to complete this numerical in your copy. See, they can ask you to find out y z also. Y z से तुम impulse response भी find कर सकते हो. How you will find out impulse response which is given to you here? Question. Is it clear? So write down next question in your copy. This is the next question, and we will wind up our class over here only. If you are having any doubt, you can ask. Next week we will have again classes. Any query, any doubt you want to ask? Attendance. Number of participants are eight: Aditi, Amisha, Amantik.